Hi YouTube! So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different because the weather is gloomy and it looks like fall might be coming early this year, which is depressing for a lot of people I know, but for me that is really exciting, it makes me feel very happy, and I'm having some coffee right now in my Voodoo Donut mug. If you've never heard of Voodoo Donut, you should look them up. They are really cool. They've only got like three or four locations worldwide. One is in Washington State, one is in Oregon State, and one is in Colorado. I used to live in the Denver area, so I hit that place up and it is it's so neat. I love it. And um, the coffee that I'm drinking is by Bones Coffee. It is called Jackdo Lantern. It is pumpkin spice flavor, and as you can see, it has the Headless Horseman on there, which I love that. It's one of my favorite movies ever. Sleepy Hollow. So um, before we get started, I just want to say I am a logical-minded person, and I understand that these things are just unexplained. It's not necessarily that they are ghosts. I personally do believe in ghosts, but I am open-minded. I don't know for sure what it is that caused this. Um, maybe there's some other explanations, but I've been racking my brain for a long time, all my life, and I cannot figure out what it could possibly be. So a little bit of background about me. I grew up in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, which is the um, location of the Civil War, and it's known to be haunted. Um, there's been a lot of places that I grew up around that were featured on like ghost hunters and stuff like that. My very first um my very first job was at the cash town inn the historic cash town Inn. i'm sure you've heard of that and you know i've got stories from there if you're interested in hearing those i can tell you about that and my first job as an adult before i joined the air force was at the pub the oldest pub in the united states i believe and um, that's also in gettysburg and that's also um, has a haunted history so if you're interested in hearing about those i can tell you about that as well as you know my childhood hauntings. But this one is about my first apartment. Um, I got married whenever I was a teenager and me and my ex-husband obviously being teenagers didn't have a whole lot of money and um, for our first apartment we rented out a woman's attic and her attic had been um, it was like she 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 it was like fit it was a finished attic like she had made it she had set it up for her son I believe when he became an adult like and he went to have his own place but you know, I, I don't know, I guess she wanted to keep them close or whatever, and she had turned it into a, an apartment for a fully functioning apartment. It had a kitchen and a living room, a bathroom, and a bedroom. And um, for our first apartment, it was really nice. It had like Georgian windows, which is really cool. Um, and, uh, but it was spooky. And um, it was um, right beside a building that is also historically known to be haunted. People do tours through there and stuff like that. And our landlord, our landlady, um, she lived beneath us. So we lived in the attic basically of her home and we had like our own separate entrance. Now because she had converted this attic into a apartment, it didn't used to have a separate entrance. That was something that she built on later on. So there was still an extra door in our um, attic, in our apartment that led to her home. And, um, so that was basically like in the bedroom and it locked on our side, not on the other side, but on our side so that we can keep it locked for our own comfort, our own sense of safety. Um, but for some reason, without fail, every day it was unlocked and hanging open. So at first we were irritated. We're like, why is she sneaking into our apartment? That's really weird. But then I was like, we're looking at the door and we're looking at the lock and we're like, hey, there's not really a way that she could do this. You know, we couldn't figure out how she could possibly be doing this. And we asked her and of course she was like, no, I have no reason to go up there. Uh, she was like, I don't even use the staircase that leads up there because she said, uh, she's like, I actually have an armoire in front of the door on my side, you know? So she like keeps her locked so that we can't go on her side and she can't, and ours is locked in a way that she can't go up to our side. So, um, so that was that was her alibi and it checks out and I still believe her on that I mean there I really don't see how she could have gone through okay so but every day it was open um, and every day we would just creeped out we would just shut it real quick and lock it but one day um, I decided to look down the staircase just out of my curiosity was burning and um, it was open so I just like opened it the rest of the way and I like looked down the uh, the staircase and it was a pretty staircase it was like nice 
solid wood, high quality wood, um, nice carpet, pretty burgundy, old fashioned, like Victorian um, wallpaper it was really pretty. But the weird thing was that it was just covered in crucifixes. Now, I don't think that it would be weird at all for somebody to have a crucifix in a stair in a stairway, even if they're not using it, because, you know, if, if, if you believe that that keeps you safe or, you know, that does something for you to have one there, that, that wouldn't be weird to me at all. The thing was, it was covered in crucifixes and it wasn't like it was like a collection. Like my grandma has a like way too many crucifixes, <laughs> but it's not even really weird because they're like all different. Like one's made of roses, one looks like one looks like like a celtic cross one you know like they all have different looks to them it's like she's collecting them they have meaning to her but they're also very different these were not these look like they were put together with like lincoln logs or something like that there's just a ton of them hanging up and it was just weird and she didn't come off to me as somebody who was weird or superstitious or unreasonable or anything it was just again it was weird okay so I thought that was weird. I stepped back because I didn't want to go down her staircase because I felt like that would be almost an invasion of privacy to come up to her door. So I uh, shut the door, locked it again and everything, moved on with my life. So then, um, now me and my ex-husband, we had different work schedules. We hardly ever s were sleeping at the same time. And um, one night I'm sleeping and he was at work and um, well, I, I didn't fall asleep yet. I was like laying in bed, getting ready to sleep. And across, like perpendicular from my bed was a dresser with a mirror on top. And I kept, it caught my eye a couple of times. It appeared to be a person pacing back and forth. And I like looked like kind of like around like the corner of like the room to see if somebody had climbed through my window. Yeah, I was terrified by the way. Like I'm telling this really calmly right now, but I was like pissing my pants scared at the time, of course. So yeah, there's nobody in the room or anything like that. And again, like two more times, I saw a man's shape pass in front of my window, my mirror. And I just, I couldn't take it. I was like, okay, I can't see it, but there's obviously something in here. So, you know, I went, uh, I, I slept on the couch that night. Um, I put on like, like I put on the TV and like put on something, you know, funny and uplifting to kind of keep my mind off it. And I went to sleep, moved on with my life. Um, did not say anything to my ex-husband at the time because, you know, by the time that I woke up, I had to go, you know, get ready, go to school, and he would be coming home from work around the time that I had been arriving at school. So we didn't see each other. And, you know, back then, this was 11 years ago, um, people didn't keep in touch so much over their cell phones as they do now where you would, like now, like with my current husband, stuff like that, we always text each other like, you know, I'm leaving, I'll see you later and stuff like that, or I got here safely, that sort of thing. Well, we didn't really do that back then. So I didn't talk to him all day. Like I was at school, I did school. And um, when I was getting off of school, I was like, I saw that I was ch checked my phone. I saw that my phone had a couple missed calls from him. So I called him back and he was like, hey, I was just letting you know that I'm not at the apartment. I'm at, I forget where he was. I think he was like with his, with his friends or something like that somewhere. And I was like, why would happen? He goes, it was just, he was like, there's just a weird, he was like, just weird stuff kept happening. So I left. And I was like, really like what? Because that's crazy. I was going to tell you that I was having like just a weird, just weird occurrences last night. And so again, I did not tell him about the figure passing in front of the mirror. Right? So he tells me, well, long story short, what he explained, I know now is what people refer to as um, sleep paralysis, which sounds absolutely terrifying. Um, now at the time I had never heard of that. And when he explained it to me, I didn't know what to think. Demons, ghosts, what is it? And he was, he really felt like he was like fighting for his life and being held down. And, um, while that was happening, he said he kept, he saw a male in the mirror, the same mirror that I was telling you about before. I was just like, that blew my mind. Like <laughs> getting chills right now thinking about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, he experienced the same thing as me, except for worse, because obviously like the, the sleep paralysis or whatever that was had accompanied it. So, I, you know, I was like terrified. Um, so, you know, we usually tried to stay like away from our ho like, apartment. We'd go over to like his parents' house and we would just go do other things. And we would just 
keep busy, you know, and if we had to be there, we just tried to keep like a funny TV show on or we'd play our video games or whatever and keep our, keep our mind off it as best as we could, you know, we need to, we need to be adults, you know. Um, but it doesn't end there. Things get scarier. Um, so whenever, sometimes, well, almost, almost every, every weekday, I would have school and then I'd have work in the evening. So on those days, I would come from school, get ready, get myself like all, like changed for work and stuff, and then lay down on my sofa and take uh, like a 20 or 30 minute cat nap. And, um, so in between, you know, to kind of like give myself a second wind. And again, my ex-husband at the time would not be home during that time. He was uh, at work. And his work was 45 minutes to an hour away. It was like a really long way away. And um, so, you know, I come home one day and uh, from school and I lock my door. And something you should know about me is I've always been obsessive about locking doors and windows. I've never been somebody who leaves windows open to let a breeze in in the summer or, um, or or leave doors open like no I've watched way too many serial killer documentaries you know I I know to keep all that stuff locked and to the point that I annoy people with it like if somebody comes to my house like I lock the door right behind them which can make people feel a little bit <laughs> unsettled um, but also my husband gets annoyed because sometimes um, like, like he'll go out and take the trash or something like that or go get the mail like do something real quick or run out to the car or something and out of habit I lock the door behind him and he's like, dude, I was gone for two minutes and you locked the door behind me. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but two minutes is plenty of time to be murdered. And, you know, I'm sorry. It's just a habit. So, yes, I do not forget to lock doors. So I lock the door behind me. I get ready for work. I lay down on the couch and I set the alarm on my phone for like 30 minutes. Okay, so I like fall asleep right away. A little bit later, I feel myself being roused from sleep as if somebody is trying to wake me up. So, you know, like as I'm waking up, I'm thinking my ex-husband um, woke me up. And of course, now while I'm waking up and sitting up, what, what's on my mind is he's not supposed to be home till like midnight. So either I missed work or he got home early. But and then I'm noticing that it's still like completely light out. So it's like, wait, what is going on? And I'm thinking maybe he got let off so I'm like looking around looking around the room for him and I don't see him so I'm thinking he if he tries to scare me he's giving me trouble and um so I call out his name a few times he doesn't answer and I'm like what the heck I call his phone he doesn't answer um so you know I start like looking like around the apartment I realize he's not there the door's still locked which yeah when he comes in he always locks the door behind him but you know after a search around I realize he's not there so I call the phone that's like, not not his cell phone, but like his work phone, like the, the phone in there, was in their like factory room, whatever. And um, he was there and everything. He's like, hey, what's up? And I was like, it, okay, I just wanted to see where you were because somebody just like woke me up and you're not here. And he was like, yeah, no, I'm not there. And um, so there's no way because he lived like he worked like 45 minutes to an hour away there's no way that he would have been able to um drive home wake me up and drive back to work in that time <laughs> like there's no way okay he has the receipts it wasn't him so i'm really creeped out but i think okay you know sometimes i guess you know maybe that was just part of my dream i don't know so then i um op I open up my camera again and the gallery is open it's open to the gallery so um, I'm like, that's weird. I never, hardly ever use my photo gallery. But the craziest thing about it was that it was a bunch of, it was like 13 pictures of me sleeping on the couch and then a video of me sleeping on the couch. So of course my heart sank. Before I even decided to open these up, I put, I put the phone in my purse and left, locked the door behind me and I went to work early. And since I was there early, I sat down on one of the tables and had a drink and, um, a drink and a snack and I uh, and I went through my phone the photos of me were of me sleeping on the couch and they were um, you could see my arms I, I always sleep to this day I always sleep with my arms crossed like this and that's how you can see it so you can see that it's not like I was in my sleep or anything like that like taking pictures of myself in my sleep taking selfies you know and I've never been a per the type of person who could like take pictures with their feet I guess some people do that but you can tell that it's not me doing that either because you can tell that it was taken from a person standing up at least a yard away. So that's terrifying. I looked at the timestamps on them 
and it was all when I was sleeping there by myself and when my husband ex-husband was definitely at work so that was terrifying I started thinking that maybe somebody broke into my apartment because even if it's like a ghost it's like to this day I don't even know like I mean if it was a ghost it's like I don't know I don't know guys I don't know the answer you know I just it's just a mystery to me I'm creeping myself out I'm getting all scared <laughs> okay anyway no I'm a big girl I'm okay I'm fine um so and then the video I'm getting chills I'm sorry I'm getting goosebumps thinking about this but it, it's still it still like makes my eyes water like you know when you get really scared like your eyes water just when I think about it it just I can't believe it and I wouldn't believe it if somebody else told me this I just kind of be like mm, okay <laughs> but it happens to me so anyway with the video um it was also me sleeping and the person actually took a few steps towards me and I said like I looked I like like opened my eyes for a second I was like who are you or who is that or something like that I forget what I said I was like who is that or who are you or what do you want or something like that and then they turned off the camera and I think that's about whenever I woke up. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know what it could have possibly been. Um, I, there's nothing, I mean, it's like, it doesn't make sense that it's a ghost. It does make sense that it was somebody that snuck into my apartment. There's just so many, it's just, it's just a terrifying thing for me to think about. Um, and then, so those are all the stories I think from my first apartment, unless there's anything that I can't think of. Um, but I've also got tons of stories. I'm going to be having videos about, you know, my childhood home and, you know, the different places that I've worked and, you know, I even have stories from as an adult, <laughs> there's been some crazy things. And I also have, um, I have one ghost story that's actually from a friend that, or no, my brother-in-law had actually told me this story. So yeah, so that's the end of the story. Thank you so much for watching. And if you liked it, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.